All right, here's our example. Now the stack class is a class. It's not like an interface. So we can literally say new stack. Um, so we can say create a stack of commands. So the type of our variable here will be a stack of, we're just going to use strings. We're going to keep this super simple. So we're going to have a stack of strings we call commands. And we'll say that equals new stack. Now internally, a stack is going to use a more fundamental data structure, but only expose the stack methods. Okay, So often we use an array list to implement a stack. And in fact, in the next chapter, you will use an array list to implement a stack. But it's helpful, and it communicates some. It's helpful in two ways to instead use the stack class and actually make the type stack. One, it communicates to others how this code is going to behave. Everyone knows we're going to push and pop things, and that's an appropriate model for our data. It also helps us code it, because by actually limiting the number of methods we can call, we're less likely to like make a mistake and have bugs. We're only pushing and popping things. It's really hard to like mess that up and have a bug. So it actually helps us avoid mistakes by having fewer features than using like an array list to do this ourselves. All right, so let's push a bunch of commands onto the undo stack. So like we're simulating, like we're typing in Google Docs. And every time we pause, Google Docs pushes what we've typed, like the command of what we've done, onto the undo stack. So it would look something like this. So we have command.push. And we're just going to use strings. So we're going to say like insert. Uh, hello. So we type the word hello, and we and I'm going to copy this just to make my life easier because we're going to do several commands. So we type hello, H-E-L-L-O, -L -L -O, and we pause. And Google Docs is like, oh, okay, let's record this as a command. They just inserted hello. And we're, we're very thoughtful here. We're taking our time. So next we insert just a comma, and we pause again. And so Google Docs creates another command and says, oh, they've inserted a comma. And we're like, what comes next? And we're like, ooh, a space. We're going to have another word. So we do a space too, and we pause. And then we're thinking about, what do we say after hello? And we're like, oh, it's computer science class. We say world. That's what we say. And we pause. But we're not quite sure. Do we really want to say hello, world? So we add like a question mark. And we think about it more. <clears throat> and then we're like, mm, yeah, no, we definitely want to say hello world. And we delete the question mark. So that gets a slightly different command. This command is like delete the question mark. And then we replace it with an exclamation point. We are determined. We are certain. <clears throat> we now have hello world. This is what's literally going on behind, not exactly this, something like this is what's going on behind the scenes when you're typing in Google Docs. Okay? Um, this is how you support undo in any application with a model like this. We can actually now print the entire stack. Here's an important note, though. When you do print a stack, the top of the stack is on the far right. So it's only going to it's going to print in one line. It's not going to print vertically, which might make a little more sense. But think of it like you have to like rotate it yourself. The top of the stack is on the far right. So when we do system.out.println and we say commands, the top of the stack will be on the far right. Let's say we second guess ourselves and we hit undo like four times in a row. So we can write a little for loop to do this. For int i equals zero, i is less than four, i plus plus. So when we call the pop method, it returns a reference to the object we pop off of the stack. And then we can do whatever we want with it. Like if it was really Google Docs, we'd have to like deal with changing the text. In our case, let's just print it out. Or we can print out that we undid or undo 
whatever the command happens to be. There we go, something like that. So now when we run this, we can see that the thing on the top of the stack is the last command we pushed on the stack, inserting that exclamation point. And the thing on the very bottom of the stack is the first thing we pushed onto the stack, which is inserting hello. And we can see when we actually pop things, the first thing that's popped is inserting the exclamation point, then we pop deleting the question mark, inserting the question mark, and inserting world. Okay. So this is a rather simplified example, but essentially how undo is implemented in Google Docs or any other program.